Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Spark of Genius Flesh and Blood production. We have a little bit of CC replay, a uh, little replay VOD here. So it's going to be part of the, I want to make sure I got this correctly. It's part of the Fab Team Cup, I believe, uh, mm. tournament run by Fab Foundry. So this is a one of the week one matches between Team Stroopwaffles. Yes, just <laughs> Team Stroopwaffles versus, uh, I think it's just the Greek team. <laughs> I think it's literally. Yeah, simple, I like it. I think it's literally called the Greek team. So this is um, the match between Yuki Lee Bender uh, on Icelander into uh, Canaris from, well, I guess, I guess Fab Chaos, but it's like the Greek mm -hmm. team. It's kind of like they're all Greek nationals there. Right. So um, that is that is the match we're going to be watching here. So we're going to be watching uh, the TTS recording, kind of making some commentary on this. I am Joe Perral, my co-creator, co-commentator, co-caster, co-compatriot. So we've got a commentating and caster going on now. now. And yeah. he's got a haircut. Everyone rejoice. Aero we can dynamic. finally see what his face looks, uh, face looks I can like. Think better. Overheating less. Uh huh. Overheat. You see, this is the problem here. Yeah, you can't overheat. Yeah. Um. So this is this is the last of the week one games essentially, which was played earlier today. We're recording on Sunday. So with that, we can start it off here. Sure. All right. Uh, we have begun. So, Icelander, Kano. I don't think there are very many changes to Icelander. There have been some changes to Kano. There are some Dynasty cards. Actually, quite a quite a bit of cards, like, just as far as power creep going on, which is reasonable for Kano. Like, a lot of the cards now have Surge text on them, so they're just better versions of the raw text here. So, right. looking really quick at the equipment here on the Icelander side. Uh, null Rune Hood uh, to get that extra Null. The Arcane Barrier, so you're rocking mm -hmm. Arcane Barrier 5. So, the reason is you want to block Wildfire. Right, that, that's that's really what you want to do. So, oh no, she tilted a bit. Okay, nice. So now we can, we we have Yuki angle now we going see on the here. Hand. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going Yuki angle here. So we have Striders for the Barrier Two, and then Barrier One on Alluvian, yep. Metacarpus, and Null Rune. on the Kano side. We have Ragamuffin's Hat, pretty standard to uh, be able to do some more th ridiculous shenanigans. And we see Arcane Barrier Four with Metacarpus, Alluvian, Striders, just a copy. Yep. Um, there were no CC bans as far as or suspensions as far as the uh, Dynasty update. Like the BNR so stuff. It wasn't really, yeah. With the BNR stuff, so we do see Kano going first here. Uh, pretty nice to try to get some like items or some ooh, blessing of Aether off the top. That's pretty sexy. That's a new dynasty card. Mm -hmm. so that is the one that essentially to the end of turn it doesn't do anything on that turn, but on your next turn it pops and your arcane, your next arcane is actually that plus three, right? Yeah, so it really helps with a lot of the surge keywords here because surge is really about doing a more damage uh, yep. than your printed above and over the opponent's arcane barrier. Yeah. And so this plus stir are really the big ones that enable that strategy here. So we do see uh, Canaris here. I know that's not his actual name, but I'm going to call him Canaris. That's what we'll call that's what him. We'll be TTS, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Canaris. Um, so the Blessing yeah. of Aether, and then just being able to Arsenal, pretty nice. Yeah, really good uh, Icelander here. doesn't have... Yeah, Arsenal does, uh, Icelander doesn't have an Arslan. An Arslander. <laughs> Slander <laughs> doesn't have a <laughs> Slander doesn't have a have an arsenal <laughs> third one, so uh, uh, quite nice. So yeah, very nice. Up, um, not being able to pun punch any damage through with Arcane Barrier Five, pretty much. You're pretty yeah. much just gonna want to set up and pass there. You you also don't want to give it a, a counter on Alluvian. That's still us, right. Uh, the nice point. thing is uh, Sap, which is the new Zap. Actually, Strictly the surge ability sap. does. It removes energy counters on the surge ability. So even if Yuki does get um, some counters on Luvian, there's possibility that uh, Kano is just able to surge him away here. So on Yuki's side, just mm -hmm. a uh, blue ice bolt into yep. a waiting into moon. Waiting so moon three two. and two. Yep. Yep. Easy pitch. On Kano, Kano just side. blocking up. Yep. yep. Blocking three, getting an Luvian counter. A beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful pick. And then it is Yuki's turn, so the waning is coming in for yeah. two. It's probably going to be a little bit of confusion just to make sure whose turn it is. I imagine this going to happen a couple times here. Yeah. One thing I'll note is that um, Kano is on the waning moon too, not running the Aether, yeah. uh, not Conduit, the um, Crucible. Crucible. Crucible of Aether Wave. There we go. Um, it is. Yeah. It is interesting because it makes it a lot harder to pop sur uh, Surge on some of your cards. Right. That plus one is actually quite useful. So yeah. uh, wa on, waning on is no nice block, if you are. It guarantees yeah. a Surge, yeah. Yeah, waning is definitely also nice on your because if you're playing on your opponent's turn, if Kano's doing a bunch of stuff on the opponent's turn, opposing turn, you can waning moon for three, which right. is quite nice, right? Uh, whereas crucible, you do need something to, you know, some something to actually buff. 
Whereas here, you just need the non-attack off the top for Kano. So you play the non-attack off Kano, then you pitch for waiting, which is pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That being said, that, so that red that that red Aether is buffing a rest spindle? That's coming in for 7, which gets seven over 5 or 8? 4 plus 3, yeah, yeah. Very hard to block this out. Actually, pretty much impossible to block out. So without without like Oasis, yeah, yeah, without Oasis, it's kind of impossible. Um, that being said, I think you could use to decide how much op she's letting through here. So it looks yeah. like the blue... Maybe another blue, and you have yeah, one floating. Yeah, five total here. Um, yeah, the knowing that is... the waning moon can probably come after this, so you you can over pitch pretty confidently here to say that you're not going to be wasting that pitch. Mm -hmm. No, it's fair. You really don't want to let more Too than the bare minimum opt. Yeah, yeah, because then then what Kano can do is just arsenal your last card, and because if you're allowed to opt, you, like you don't have to waning moon immediately, right? Mm -hmm. The key is you can just opt three, four, or five cards and have... You could sculpt your entire hand and then right. you can arsenal based on that, right? Mm -hmm. So that that is interesting. Yuki will have a strong turn of her own. She's going the... So yeah, Kato will arsenal. Yuki does have the uh, finals fighting spirit. She is in lower health, but it's still a three for seven. Yeah. Uh, pretty standard. Ha Hamil Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian Hamiltonian turn here. I like that. Hamiltonian term. turn here. You like that? Yeah, yeah just, just key keyword that one. Yeah, not for the world's cast, of course, but <laughs> very you know, hard, very hard uh, to be lower health than Kano, uh, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these cards will not get the extra bonus, like the wounded bull yeah. as well, right? So, um, but still coming sure. in for three for seven is fine. Yep, uh, blocked with two, three blocks. Mm -hmm. Took one damage. He's okay. a tome of Fiendel. Uh, definitely running. Arsenal. Yeah, running three of those in Kano is like pretty normal, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the slower matchups where you're able to like really get that extra benefit over it. Ooh. I think he's gonna say, "No, I don't think so." You're gonna need to give me more pitch than that. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be using a blue Fused ice vein. Ice vein, yep. Yeah. Coming in for three. It's important, to, it's important you do this in response because if you wait till the tome draws, you're gonna have more pitch. Yeah. Against the three, so it's possible that if Kano only has a red in their hand. Because I don't, I don't know what the pitch... Oh, no, uh, there's two floating. So if there's a red in your right. hand, you need to pitch your last card and give up. Yeah, uh, yeah. whatever that card is from oh, hand will be yeah. given wildfire. up. Wildfire. No way around. That was Wildfire. Yeah, very, very good. The, wild, the Wildfire is given up. Uh, yep. Going to block the three, I imagine, and then... It's not two pitch two on his little two. screen there, but I assume he spent it all. I guess he would have had to spend the first two before mm -hmm. pitching the uh, the Wildfire. So we can assume there's no pitch left. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's no pitch left because he would be uh he just gained two off tome and just drew two. So he has nothing right. left there. Making him making Kano pitch that wildfire is quite nice, but mm -hmm. it really depends on how quick the game goes. But we will see a waning moon coming in here for two. Gaze the ages Kano's pitched turn. as well. Yep, yep, it is the Kano's turn. So one floating. Um uh, Yuki's hand, Frost Hex, Insidious Amulet. Yeah. Very like Very nice bit of a slow turn. hand. There's no yeah, no no attacks or anything like that, but yeah. Um, she might just pitch. I imagine she just pitches Hex to waiting here for three in response, and then um, right play Amulet the... Arsenal maybe. Yeah, she could use the last. Yeah, exactly because Arsenal Insidious. Uh, right, and then she has one floating to block. Yeah, because she's going to use one because she wants to charge Alluvian. Right, and then with the other two, she can just waiting unless she's just blocking two here. She blocks two, so probably no waning unless she wants to spend one more card. I, I doubt she will. No. No, she decided to just not take any damage there, which is which is reasonable. I like, this is a bit of a yeah. It could be a little bit longer. I, I think the lower you are versus Kano, just is just like right. You, life is more important than that matchup, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, for for Kano, it's not as important. But if you are against Kano at lower health, you, your chances of losing are quite high, much much higher than Kano's. Yeah, no, exactly. But like getting getting the counters for sure, and then I think you have the choice whether you want to like keep that pitch and waning back, or if you want to just take the. Take the more conservative approach, which is what Yuki yeah. did, which is reasonable. So we do see another spindle yep. coming out. Looks like another red because the one of them was pitched. So yeah, I guess this you're is red. Blue. Yeah. Yeah, and here's where I'm just like waiting fine, but crucible nice on spindle. It, um, it is. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I think waiting definitely like waiting coming in for Icelander makes a whole lot of sense. Like that's like the only matchup you really are thinking about that. Mm. Um so it looks like you'd be pitching probably the um, full four. Looks like a four, full six pitch. Uh, yeah, the full yep, four. You're right. Four. Yep. <clears throat> Two floating charge on Alluvian. Very nice. Can now afford to use it on the Waning Moon. Yeah, you only need to. You only need two counters for the Waning Moon to uh, right. make it free. But I think yeah, the awkward part is that that Insidious Chill in the Arsenal does cost three, right? So 
Uh, you're mm -hmm. going to have right. to pitch another card if you want to respond. But no, that's fine. I think it's pretty reasonable probably pitch the Frost X, get the Insidious out, and then Arsenal Energy Epot, or just play the Epot is also fine. Um, it's it's really nice because Ar uh, because uh, Arcane, uh, because Yuki has Barrier <laughs> 5, right? So she could kind of dictate the pace that she wants to go at. She will get the Insidious out uh, and Arsenal the Epot. Assuming Kano's not doing anything, so that kind of the first option I was saying, which is really reasonable because you can get the Epot out of Arsenal for free, and then you're just yeah. stacking your board for like some really disruptive turns. Yeah, and I've already got you, Insidious out as well with an Epot will be very nice. With, yep, and then you get it. You have the Amulet too, so I think the plan for Icelander is like you set up board, chip them, and then you just say have it. Like you force them to have it, and if they don't have it, you take all their shit and kill them. Right, right? and that that's that's kind of the idea here. Uh, we are going to see a Kano activation for Flare. Okay. Pitching I don't know if that was potion blue, of blue or red. Is that a blue um, or red? That looks like a blue to me. Okay, so it's coming come in for one. It, it's it, it's quite nice at one because you don't want to pitch your last card. Like it is it is a blue, but you're still going to be able to get the one off of this. Yeah, this is pretty much like chip damage, like a Kodachi. It's like, do you want to block this without any floating? Probably not. Hmm. And you you do also see the waning moon, so it's gonna be coming from for three. Yeah. Uh, so going down to thirty, if you want to keep your e pot, yeah, I think that's pretty reasonable. I think you're at a high enough health that trading resources on board is fine because them bursting you at that is not heavy. And then yeah. Kano's probably just gonna like pitch a blue and hit you with a something, and right. then you can pitch if you want and get the e pot out. Ooh, uh, we do a nice see strike and um, polar blast, I believe there. Imperial Edict, okay. not something I thought I was going to see. So this yeah, is a I, one cost here. I need to read that definitely. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Yuki, Yuki's helping us yeah, out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, like, like, oh, oh, I need to read this. <laughs> okay. So Kato is not a royal, so right. you don't reveal the hand, but yeah. you will be able to name, name the card. card. Yeah. Okay. It has to be Ice Eternal, no? Like what? What else are you afraid of in this matchup other That's than Ice a Eternal? That's fair point. Probably Ice, ice Vein. Eighth, because you can Aether, ice fan, cover all nine hit, or eight of them, I guess, right? Those are, like, literally the only two things yeah. I could possibly think about. Because that then you can't really striders out an ice vein to counter, like, your big attacks. Exactly. Or, yeah. or even, even like, pitching for a blue ice vein at instant speed, right? Still very mm -hmm. disruptive because of the on-hit. The nice thing the nice thing is Yuki just you gets to play this e-pot for free. Yeah. Like, it's... It's like, this was no real threat estate. that you could ever imagine. Here's an E-Pot. It's mm. like, all right, well, couldn't have called that. Yeah, it seems reasonable here. So she's going to be able to just, like, literally play E-Pot, pitch the Waning Moon here. I do like seeing the Dynasty cards, though. These are cards that I have mm. not seen played yet, or at least the Imperial Edict. So it's ha I'm happy to see it be used. And to mm. what effect? Probably zero. But it's kind of cool anyway. Yep. Is that a Red Ice Vein? Um, in hand, that is a red ice vein, yes. Okay, so it looks like she's going to be using the Alluvian to ice vein back fuse because mm. you need to pitch the pitch the butter in arms and fuse with the polar blast. Right, right. Um, to be yep. able to do that, that makes sense. Yeah, maybe Arsenal E Strike. Yeah, Arsenal E Strike is fine. I mean, I, it's just like a nice two card seven damage, and you, you can Arsenal another blue. Uh, exactly. None of those like yeah. polar blast nor brother in arms are cards you're going to want in Arsenal anyway. So she is going to go ahead and fuse that go. ice vein. Yeah. Um, Super reasonable. Yeah, alternatively, you can come in for a seven with E Strike on this turn. Oh, you can't. Sorry, the action point's gone. So you'd have to Arsenal. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You'd, you'd have to E Strike go again. Uh, and Into then, like, pitch a non fused pitch nice thing. A non fused Ice Vein. Mm. Yeah. Which kind of yeah, sucks. You don't, you don't, yeah, you don't, you don't have enough. And then you wouldn't have an Arsenal. Exactly. Case, right? so so it's quite an expensive turn, not really worth doing. Um, probably Arsenal's the Polar Blast here, just to get that Arsenal effect. Uh, unless she wants the waiting moon. Unless you're waiting, then, moon, right. which yeah. I guess is more effective because you're spending all your cards, or at least yeah, you get a full hand after that. Yeah, she she would rather because it's her turn. I think as Icelander, what you want to do is you want to pitch the polar blast for three prevention on mm -hmm. arcane barrier rather than to use it for two damage because three is bigger right. than two. Right. Just, this just in at Spark of Genius, three is bigger so, than two. So yeah, we can do math. So I, I assume here she might want to declare Arsenal and see what Kano does. Or just use it mm -hmm. here proactively or um, defensively if Kano does react to this. Yeah. Um, well, well, Kano Kano is Aether flaring in response off the top. Right. This is a <laughs> blue Aether flare here for for one. Yeah, and I think did Kano hold priority? No, it looks like that's resolved. And um, now. Yeah, you could. Did, uh... Oh, she's he's just pitching. He's just pitching for the. Okay. Aether okay. Flare. So she, okay. <laughs> so she is pitching for damage prevention here. So yep. yeah, very nice. Um, Olivian. 
Yep. Yep. And likely going to be seeing a waning moon out of Kano. Uh, he does have two yeah. floating, so that's yeah, perfect recipe there. Oh, he's just going to Luvian here. I don't... Um, okay. I, th I think he might need the two floating to uh, pay for the Ice Vein. That makes sense. On hit. It is five damage. Uh, yeah, not on hit, on damage, I should say. <laughs> right. I keep making that mistake, uh, but... It's it's doesn't hit. Uh, yeah, there is yeah. no physical, no Unoffic physical damage here. On hit. It's a non-attack action. Non-hit light, non-hit at home. No. Yeah, not. <laughs> uh, sure, let's go with that. So, Yuki's gonna prevent everything else she can. So, so she's kind of it's kind of what I was mentioning before. It's like three is three is just bigger than two here. So mm -hmm. you're just going to um, yep. take one and be able Soak to arsenal the one. You strike. Um, we are seeing oh. another Kano off the top, seeing a Tome of Fyandel. Very nice. I like it. Keep going. Um, he does have one that... to pitch for it, I think. Yeah, he does, because he alluvianned the Waning Moon. He had two Thought floating. Big used brain one wolf. of them. <laughs> yeah, he just sacked the Tome off the top. So he's going to gain three <laughs> life over that, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, he shouldn't because it wasn't from Arsenal, right? Oh, that's true. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a yeah. dirty, dirty, dirty liar. <laughs> but okay. uh, he's, he does get he does get more blues to just keep yeah. drawing epoch. Yeah, this is still a very oh, good go. engine to keep going, right? That or Tome of the Aether Wind, right? Great things off the top. Mm, yep, so you just keep exactly. Going. Yep, it's epochs pod, are nice. Deja blues are nice. It is pot of greed. Yeah, um, plain and simple. And the best part is that it's legal, so he should legal actually pot of play, <laughs> he can play it. Um, very nice. Oh, he had it in hand actually. Uh, I think it's the he cost discarded for ice fan. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he didn't have any more uh, pitch going. No on. floating, so he couldn't effectively pitch two. Yeah, probably two red cards in that his hand is, is what I would assume. Uh, yeah. Oh there's a blizzard right, there's it. Yeah. There's an insidious trigger. There's an insidious uh, trigger. I did that forget about that discard. too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the trigger on the insidious was yeah. tome, and then he pitched blazing either to prevent. Yeah. Um. You always want to pitch because of alluvian. Oh, sorry. Yeah, alluvian. Right. And so you always want to like get the charges up on that. So makes it makes sense. So yeah. he's gonna do. So Ice Fane's gonna come in for a couple damage. Yep. Uh, a couple Dimaggios. He already took that, I believe. Went from twenty nine to twenty six here. Yeah, already took it. Yuki's just gonna Alluvian for two free damage, which is pretty reasonable. Yeah, very good Arsenal turn for Yuki. Yeah, excellent turn. Yeah. The, the only the only unfortunate part is that uh, well, it's not unfortunate, but if she had the blue, you just get the free damage because unless Kano pops the E pot, there's no cards in Kano's hands, mm -hmm. right? So that's like the only um, right slugged outside, but I think oh, this is strong because she can e strike mm. into wounding bull. So right? does she take the damage yeah, she... here? So wounded bull procs for one extra damage. There is, there is no damage. Like Kano oh, has Kano's no hand. Passing. Kano's just you're, you're right. Yeah, He's just passing. Yeah, because Kano did all of that on ice on her turn. turn. That's right. So, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. So he's just gonna draw up. She's just gonna e strike wounding bull here. Yeah. The Hamiltonian. Yeah. The Hamiltonian <laughs> one here. Very nice. Uh, was that fourteen damage? Or no, go yeah, again. So, so 12 damage, I assume. No, no, 12 damage. Yeah, 5 plus, uh, five plus 7 five here. Plus and then seven. you're just going to probably pitch the... Um... Now, do you pitch the amulet? Or I, I feel like you Ooh. want the e pot. Yeah, the e pot is... Yeah, I, I would say e pot here. But amulet's kind of nice. Because you already have the insidious chill out. Amulet isn't as important. So yeah, we do there see goes, the There goes the amulet. Pitched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Which makes sense because E pod is just like because you because E pod is more flexible in this matchup because you can use it to block and attack. Yeah, like yeah. you can use the pitch to striders. You can you never can have pitch enough pitch, block. right? Stack all you the really E pods you you can because that'll that'll come in handy yeah. no matter what. Yep, really interesting card there blocked uh, Aether Quickening, which uh, oh, yeah, hopefully will see yeah. played out. Yeah, yeah, it was a quickening. Kano E pot pass. Uh, e -pot, Yuki's yeah. definitely responding with her own E pot. This <laughs> yeah, is yeah, just yeah. gonna be the potions. Ocean Epods. Master going on here. Come in here pitching Ice Eternal. Okay, that's fair. For a waning moon for no, three. Uh, yeah, pitching for the Ice Eternal. Because she has Channel Lake, which is real, yeah. real strong here. You can't, yeah, you can't Kano effectively with a Channel Lake out, right? You pass well, she's gonna, four. She's just going to Ice Fade and fuse with Channel and Arsenal Channel. It's so good. Oh, oh, she's there Arsenal. Yeah, that, there you go. Yeah. Oh, right. oh yeah. It's yeah, so yeah, good. Yeah. Like, Not even play this Channel. Is, just <laughs> Ice this is a red Ice Fade, too. This yeah. is why Yuki is the, the Ice Queen. The, ice the queen. queen of the north here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 2021 man. champ. See, like, dumb um, me would have probably pitched for <laughs> pitched for Channel 8 to get that out earlier than Arsenal the Ice Fade. Uh, but you know, you know, you know the problem is that if you do that, you you first of all, you probably force Kano to respond before that resolves, before you true. get the tax, right? That's true. The other thing is that you get an extra turn of channel for free out of the arsenal. So you pay for it. Yes. And you don't have to put on the counter on their turn, right? So you get a free 
turn of channel and, th and then you're forcing them to resolve it on their own turn where they might have already played, played something, right? Yeah. So this means they have Kano <laughs> before, blind. Yeah. Surprise channel like Fridge is always better than a scripted one. It's like, just here you go, mm -hmm. right? It's always better to well, play this... it out as, at instant speed. Yeah, this isn't a surprise anymore. No, but it's right. still coming in. But it's still coming in. The timing speed. might be a surprise. True. So it looks like we're gonna see a. <clears throat> I would imagine arcane barrier two. Uh, and he took. Block. Oh no. Yeah, I think it's five. Right. Yeah. Arcane barrier three. three. He took three. Yeah. So we'll see that fake on hit. Oh, I think he uh, pitched the excess resources there to deal with the on the on hit effect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, that's exactly that's exactly what he did. Right. Right. All right. Wait, he pitched four to block two. Yes, sorry, I'm just dumb. That makes sense, right? Because the um, XS two then. Yeah, can no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just dumb. Just it's ignore me. Uh, no so here we problem. see the Aether spindle. <laughs> yeah, another spindle. Wait. That's his third. Am I counting that right? At least it is his third if it's red. If it, it's uh, red, it's his third. Oh, it, uh, it might be yellow or red. Definitely not a blue. So at least red right, yellow spindles. Uh, maybe his like list. <laughs> Oft is pretty strong. I'll give him that. Um, it's strong, but like coming in for three arcanes, like you have to arcane barrier three, pitch yeah, blue, and pass. Uh... I assume it's red. Let's assume it's red for damage. We'll see how much Yuki pitches and how much damage she takes to confirm yeah. it. So he has one floating. Yuki has. Uh, yeah. What does she have in Arsenal again? Um, Channel Lake. <laughs> Channel Lake. Yeah. So obviously not is a great the... time to Channel Lake. She could still do it um, just to get it out there. But um, is she thinking of popping an E? No, I don't think so. Because you, you, what you want to do is you probably you have another channel lake in your arsenal, which is kind of funny. Arsenal and head, um, right? Yeah, yeah. Now she only has one trigger left on her Asidius. Right. So if oh, yeah, it we now, keep forgetting of it. Keep forgetting about right Insidious. That's that was that's what the pitch was for. Oh, I <laughs> so I think he pitched six in that case. Two prevention, two Insidious. To it might have been a it might have been a it might have been a blue ice fade. So he took yeah. three and pitched four to get the 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 trigger off. But okay, okay. I think it was a blue ice fade. Okay. Yeah. Either he way, just the, took three the two cards that he pitched pitch four. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. No, I think <laughs> I think the first one was correct. Okay, never mind. Ignore that. Yeah, fair enough. I think yeah. I think it was I think it was yeah. I think it was uh, he pitched four, used two for Insidious, and then blocked two Arcane on the five. And just the second, the trigger on Ice Fane mm -hmm. didn't matter because he had no cards left. Okay, that's fair. That's what, what it that's was. That's fair. Yeah, so the Insidious, um, one charge left. So, you know, it, it makes sense to, to pop it at, at the right time where King Oak does have something in hand where he has to respond to the effect. Using it now, wouldn't it would be a waste, effectively. I, I, I would agree with that. And here you could just E-Strike for seven. I think right. that's like a perfectly reasonable so turn. Don't really have to. I mean, not that there's anything to fuse anyway, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it doesn't really matter. Well, she point. she pitched the she pitched the ice eternal, right? She technically yeah. could have uh, pitched you're ice right, eternal, get a bunch right. of frostbites. That's true. Yeah, but that's he's at fifteen, so he's getting yeah. a, on the low. Like that's half his health, and Yuki's, Yuki's only taking eight. She's at a safe life total right now. <clears throat> she's taking eight. He's also taken more than that because he tomed up twice. No, uh, sorry, you told I think me. once for health gain, for he gained three. I, I think it was three. So he had yeah. taken um, 18 damage, and you only took eight so far? Yes, that's correct. So not bad at all. Um, we do see that E-Strike for seven coming through. Yeah, we're seeing a, seeing a double block here, Aether Flare and Aether Quickening. Um, now, all the Aether cards. One damage leaking through. Mm -hmm. I really like this attack action build for Icelander. Like, it's, it's so, so versatile. A lot of other people also do. Yeah, I'm happened, not. To win, <laughs> happened to win. This is not a hot take at all. <laughs> hot take. Effectively, the best deck in the world right now. If you consider that it won worlds. Nope. Nobody knows any better as far as the fact that there's been no major CC tournaments. Uh if you count Battle Hardened, Battle Hardened, major tournament, but I wouldn't Pro count Quest... Battle Hardened as a major tournament though. Okay, that's fair. I mean, Pro Quests are coming up soon, but there's gonna be a lot of them, and you know. I, I I would look at the keep calling. Track of, yeah, I guess calling. I would look at, at minimum. At minimum, at minimum, I'm going to be looking at like the calling to see like what or what's the what? calling or another pro tour. What's yeah. see what's good. Pro tour three, or see what's like doable. So we we do see a tome of uh, the Aether Wind coming on the Kano side, trying to draw two cards. 
yep. Yuki looking at, I think it's a pretty reasonable point to uh, channel late because he's going to draw two cards. Right. But Tome has to resolve first to draw the two cards. Right, so he can't channeling. respond with Kano before. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're right. He, he, uh, can, he can with his one, last with, card. With the one card in hand. Yeah, exactly. You're right. Yeah. Which he's letting, he's letting the channel, yeah, the channel's yeah. resolving. He's not going to Kano in response. So um, I'm assuming that no no Kano's should happen during a channel lake turn unless he has exactly enough to pitch for like an, an action after from hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is really rough. easy. It's very it's, rough. Yeah. Yeah. All he has, all Yuki has to do is like keep the channel to pitch for like fighting spirit or. Uh, that's that's literally exactly what she would do. <laughs> yeah. You literally just keep the channel to pitch, so you keep the channel on, right? So you're yeah. pitching in the one card. Get that one you ice Coming in for seven, and you just arsenal the E-Strike and come in for... Yeah. Fantastic whatever. turn. If you, have for to, seven. Yeah. if you have to pitch a lot, then you pitch a lot, and you keep a card back to E-Strike, and maybe keep blue to arsenal. Like It's it's, it's very, very smooth. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Um, very nice um, very nice hand. <laughs> it's perfect. But, butter, buttery smooth. Yeah, yeah. No bricks here. No, no bricks allowed. Yeah. So I guess um, Canaris here is thinking about what to play on his two-card draw. Very tricky. It's very tricky because he's also got a Frostbite out of the channel. So whatever yeah. he has, two extra? Yeah, he's not. He's not. Kano for can five? <laughs> You'd have to Kano for five. So it's two yeah. cards and then you do your last card. So yeah. she's going to... Yeah. She's going to do exactly what I said. Fighting because spirit. That, that is the play here. So making sure you get the uh, one trigger on mm -hmm. your channel. And then Arsling the E Strike, yeah, um, super good. It might be a bit. It might be a bit tricky without an Ice Vein to be able to get two on the channel because what you usually do is you pitch for Ice Vein Fuse and then use that fused Ice card to Waning Moon for two. Mm -hmm. That's how. That's the easiest way to keep two mm -hmm. to keep uh, your channel a second turn. But she'll already have two turns of value, right? Because that ch I think yeah. that channel straight up stopped his turn. It, it did Unless so much work. Good. Yeah, it was yeah, a point like, five, but it was more like a point seven five. You know. Yeah, I, I I would agree. That was that was a very strong channel, um, and she kept it right. Like she knew that there was a better turn to use it on rather yeah. than like you know, no cards and he spindled yeah. like just blocked. Three and giving the five. frostbite out too is so effective against Kano. So I, I think yeah. it was um, Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. So we just see the fighting spirit for seven. Um, mm -hmm. You're gonna see a so block for six, lava I and snap back. Yep, that is a six block. A one should leak through. Unfortunately, Yuki's not getting any of the bonuses from being at higher health than Kano. But you know what? If you're higher health anyway, you're doing fine. I feel like if you're at lower health that you have to use them, you're probably in trouble. You're probably dying anyway, yeah. yeah. It's true. Um, so our hand, Brother in Arms, Insidious, Cold Snap, Wounding. So I guess the most obvious play is to E-Strike and then Wounding, and then you have a blue left. Mm. Um yeah. I can't think of that many ways that she's going to get the double ice off of here because she has E Strike in Arsenal. So yeah, so that's not going to oh, work. Uh, um, he just he just draws up. He just pass draws. I mean, you uh, you could potentially pitch for Wounded Bull and pitch for Waning Moon. Is that a thing? No, because Waning Bull is an attack action, not a non attack. Oh, so, so it has to be a non attack, -attack. right? Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I I think she just E Strikes and then. Uh, wounding yeah. bulls. So I think she's deciding what to put to the bottom and what to pitch. I really don't think it matters. Brother in Arms is like, I don't think you ever keep it because it just blocks for physical, which is not really useful. So I think right. you put the Brothers in Arms. Definitely deck filler against eight. Kano. Yeah. So here it's just like, do you want to put Insidious in your arsenal or do you want to put Cold Snap? Um, Cold Snap draws you a card. The freeze is like actually kind of useful ish. Like mm -hmm. it depends on, like, it could stop a, it could stop an arsenal to Aether Wildfire. Which mm -hmm. is kind of nice. Like you'd have to respond with Strider's Wildfire and like make them go for it. Yep. Um, <clears throat> now, what's interesting here is that that Imperial Edict is just chilling. At what point is that <laughs> going to be popped? I wonder. Yeah, that's true. Actually, um, now it has to be. It's an action, right? So you cannot pop it at instant speed. I Correct. Assume. It's a. It's a. Yeah. It's an action with go again. So yeah, we're going to okay. see a yield fourteen. Um, or a yield uh, oh, sorry, 12, 12, for 12, right? Yeah, I keep forgetting to. It's not 7, it's 5. Let's go again. Yeah. Um, I think she already has the one Insidious out with the one trigger, has the yeah. Frost Samuel out, doesn't really need it. I think the, the Cold Stamp is just much more efficient as far as like you could pitch a blue, you'll have enough for waiting regardless, and you can use mm -hmm. as many cards as you need to, um, to like prevent damage. Another yeah. E pot is like 
kind of nice. Uh, Merida Scolding is also kind of nice. So, yep. oh, she could probably just win on this turn. Hold on. What is her Arsenal card? Cold Snap, right? Oh, it's Cold Snap. So you can definitely play that out, draw a card, right? Yeah, so she might be... So I think the plan here is what Yuki should do is she should definitely do her turn. Or, like, he's Kano's probably passing, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And we can see here Kano just passed his turn. Yeah, Nothing so Yuki really for Yuki to do. Play out. Yeah. Play out the Cold Snap. It doesn't need to be as an instant because it doesn't really, you know. Frostbite wouldn't have mattered here uh, if Kano's just yeah. deciding to pass. Yep, you, you have the go again anyways. Cold Snap has go again. You get to draw your card. You're going to wait to see if Kano wants to respond to this, which is fine because you're you're rocking two E-Pots. You're, you're rocking five blue hand with your E-Pots currently. <laughs> yeah. You have your two E-Pots. Yeah, two that's fit. true. Yeah. So four, um, four resources just on the board. Yeah, so you can literally block... Uh, Six plus you can block fifteen. That's crazy. You could you could AB five three times. You're not so you worried about somehow, anything. <laughs> tri triple wired wildfire for some in some way shape or form and get them all up to five because <laughs> it comes in for four. Right, that's the key. You're not on crucible, and if you're not on crucible, those wildfires are coming in for four. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the wit con is here for Kano. I think I feel like you're just kind of slowly getting ice ice locked here. Yeah. And you can barely chip Icelander um, without giving up. Maybe. You know, yeah, with AB5 too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Yuki's played played this in a way where she always keeps something behind to be able to pitch for Arcane Barrier. Uh, I don't think it was, mm. there was... Uh, I, mean, I can't think of a single situation where she had nothing in hand and, and Kano gave free chip. Maybe early on when she went a little more ham, but most of her hands have been at least one card in hand. It's a blue or two. One to Arsenal, one to pitch yeah. for. So she's playing very well. She's playing very well, but she has a couple reps in the hero. She did top 64 on this on Icelander CC. That's true. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm just stating the obvious here at this point. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's, she's practiced in Icelander. Just mm. a little practiced here. So we do see Aether Quickening coming in off the Kano mm. uh, in response to uh, Cold Snap. So... Right. So, um... Surge not active as far as I can tell because it was not buffed by anything. But you, it doesn't matter because you can't gain go again on not your turn. It's Yuki's right. turn. No, nope. right. You are correct. That's true. Yeah. So the surge doesn't even matter. Right. Yeah. It may look weird the way it looks. <laughs> kind of looks like maybe cold snap in response to Aether quickening, but it's uh -huh. actually the other way around. So yes. you have to remember that uh, there is no reason to surge because it's like you don't gain go again on your opponent's turn. Right. Go again doesn't resolve because. You it's not your turn. You, <laughs> you cannot gain an action point on your opponent's turn. Um, yep. You can play instance, you can de-react, you can defend, you can activate abilities as an instant, but you don't have action points. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's just okay. a one for four here. Yeah. Uh, Yuki seems to want to take... Taking two here? Uh, well, she pitched here. Emeritus, right? Which is a yeah, blue. Yeah, just two floating. Yep, so just two floating here. Oh, you're right. She has two floating, yes, because she pitched for the uh, cold snap, yes. Yeah, it doesn't really matter because she's going to draw a card. She hasn't even drawn her... She hasn't even resolved her no. cold snap yet. <laughs> no. I think you two just damage take is two pretty here. much nothing here. Just, I would, yeah. Just pitch two, take two. Yeah, so let's, like, like thinking about what, what she actually wants to do. She wants to get that Emeritus in Arsenal because that is one of your win cons, mm -hmm. right? Because that Emeritus comes in for five damage on your... Right. Uh, four damage on your opponent's turn, sorry. Right. Yeah, two turns into four, I believe. Yeah, you are correct. Um, yeah. yeah. So, in reality... So, E-Pot, pass? Okay, so she's pitching. I think you're just... I, you're huh. going to waiting move here, I huh. believe. See, I would have probably oh, no. pitched Brother in Arms. Um, instead of I, e I don't think you... I don't think you need a third E-Pot. Like, you, you, <laughs> the only reason you're pitching Never one enough. more is because if they stop the turn, mm -hmm. then you literally just waiting moon for two. And if mm -hmm. they don't, then you have two up. Like here... So she's going to use the two. Right. And she's going to pitch Brothers in Arms or not. I, I thought she would probably okay. pitch Brothers in Arms to block the extra one. Right. Um, <laughs> unless she, well, she'll probably that's keep right. it for the waning. Well, she hasn't even drawn the card, drawn the card right? She's uh, not. That's, why, that's why I'm a little, yeah, that's why I'm a little surprised she didn't pitch, mm -hmm. uh, pitch into the um, extra AB1 to have two floating now. Yeah. That being right, said, now back. we see snapbacks. So I guess it didn't matter, but like. Right. Because now you can just pitch three here against the snapback and yeah, you'll still which, draw a card and be able to waiting move. I think she's doing here. Yeah. So yeah. 
pitch for three, blocking, I believe, the full snapback. No real reason to keep any pitch behind unless you want to make sure you have enough for um, Waning Moon. Yeah. And there's Ice Eternal, right? Ice so Eternal. then you're just, you're just pitch, pitch the Ice Eternal to yeah. Waning Moon for three here. Or uh, you keep the Ice two. Eternal for a big ass turn next turn. He's already at 10. <laughs> I think you're just going to Meredith and kill him. You just kind of take it slow. I, yeah, okay. Okay. I, I also think it's like you have one Insidious and you have Amulet. I think you could just Striders in an Ice Vein and be fine. Yeah. And like take a whole lot of their cards. Oh, I don't really think yeah. you need to pop. It's, it's not like they're on Frost Hex and you're giving them like a bajillion Ice Eternals here. Yeah, so, that's uh, true. It's less of a win con currently because there's no Frost Hex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chip damage exactly. is probably the but, way to go. Yeah. Yeah. You just chip in for two. You're going to get a card. They're going to get an Alluvian counter, but then they're going to have one card in hand and you're going to have Emeritus, meaning they can't use their full AB4 because they have mm. one card in hand. Like, it seems <laughs> good to me. They have Epots. They have Epots. That's true. That's true. So they, they could AB4, but it'll cost them the Epots. Yeah, and that means you can't use the Epots to do damage. And without the Epots, I don't know how Kano kills Icelander. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a little bit that's a little bit awkward if you can't like really burst through that We're hand. seeing is. the red Ice Vein there. That is beautiful. Trying to like Ice Vein... Uh, enough ice to fuse for days. Oh. Looks really good. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, Ken only has two cards, so like the minute he does anything, I, I imagine he's just gonna pass. I, I guess he could see. pitch, right? No, he's just gonna pass. He, he's passing here. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, quite a quite a one sided battle right now. Like you said, it's yep. very hard for Kano to claw back on a big combo turn if he's uh... like AB five is just so hard to punch through yeah. as Kano. Yeah, we're like seeing you're gonna this... need like a big a big turn. Icelander has AB five and a shit ton of blues, so it's yeah. just like, well, you pitch two blues, AB five, one floating. Like, mm. Yep. All right. Um, yeah, so we're seeing the insidious chill proc here. Yep. That's gonna resolve first. So either we, pitching we or finally, starting. we finally remember there's insidious chill on the board. Yeah, yeah, so we, we, we'll now know. We, we know. Insidious... We know by now how this works. Right? Yeah. So we do see insidious chill proc. So that's gonna be a, a card or two pitch. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're gonna see Ice Vein proc, and then uh, potentially or, or, the Amulet of Ice. You know, I, I think you probably take the Amulet here also. Yeah. Um, there is something to be said. Like I don't. I think you probably do this, and then you're gonna like waiting, and then just wait to Emeritus on their turn. Mm -hmm. is, is my guess. You also have two E pots up, so mm, uh, I don't really know. I think uh, yeah, Alluvian. You probably want to wait till next turn. So the trigger. Probably just thinking what he wants to discard or pitch. <clears throat> I think it's Kano runs a lot of blues, but there are like a decent amount of yeah. We're, we're seeing red. this looks like a brick hand, which is oh okay. Well, we are seeing the discard now pitching six to block out the um, four of the five, so taking one, mm -hmm. and then the remaining pitch uh, to pay for two. So for I think two blues covers yeah. covers everything here. Yeah, it covered. Well, it, he's gonna take the one. He's gonna he, leave he the did one. Take it the covers one. everything else. Yeah, yeah. the the the, okay. uh, the on hit effect was covered. But now, like that required three cars to deal with, and now what Yuki can do is literally just pitch. Yeah, the waiting moon and grab the last card, or grab an e pot, or grab whatever, mm -hmm. because you don't you don't you're not really using an, an either of those either of those cards, right? So either the bolt, or the um, or the or the channel like frigid, right? But yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, Ice Vein was played from hand, obviously, so she cannot play... Um, what was in the Arsenal again? It was uh, Emeritus? Emeritus Schoolman. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's going to that's gonna be her wing con off Metacarpus, I imagine. Yeah, and of course you want to play that on the opponent's turn, too, just to get the extra two damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're probably waiting for, like, a bigger attack, and then you're just going to pitch, use your E-Pots, uh, uh, pitch, use your E-Pot, and mm -hmm. go for it with multiple attacks. So we're going to see a Waiting Moon... Is gonna come for two. Gonna block one. Um, did he pitch a red? Um, hard to tell. Not sure. Yeah. So I, I, I assumed it was coming for two, and he pitched one to block one of the two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, I think, I think he pitched one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he had a red left. So okay. Yuki draws up, and so he, two he passes blue, two red hand. Yeah, it was quite quite heavy. So he literally has four pitch. He has e pot, e pot to block four. So she needs to just do eleven. Uh, she has blue ice bolt. Yeah, so she's good because she metacarpus the um There we go, the emeritus yep, for emeritus. five. Yeah, so that's five, four, yep. three. Five, four, right? three is exactly twelve. Yeah. yeah. This should yeah. be enough for lethal, yeah. We're seeing an e pod yeah. come down here um to block out two of the five, right? 
Yeah, two of the five. Uh, uh, he, he could block out four. It doesn't really he took, matter. Sorry, no, he, he, he lost four. two E-pots here, yeah. Shire's out, Ice Bolt. This is coming in for, um, if it's, is it a blue? It's a blue, right? So it should be for three? Yeah, because she has Alluvian to pay for free for the, the yeah. wing. Yeah, I think she's showing him that she has the, uh, <laughs> the yes, nice she has zoom it. in victory. <laughs> yeah, because that comes in for, Ice Bolt comes in for four buffed. Emeritus comes in for five, yeah. and then Moon comes in for three. Three, yeah. Uh, so. You can't, you can't metacarpus the the Illuvian. Wing. Moon has Sorry, to be a, uh, has to be a, yeah, yeah, it wing, has to be a yeah. card. Yeah, it, it, it improves the arcane damage of a card, uh, yeah. not an activated ability like a waiting. Oh, so that was the game. Started. Okay, <laughs> yeah. You know, that right. that was the game. GG. Uh, Yuki taking it down for Team Stroop Waffles. So you guys got the name probably from the Stroop Waffles we got in California, right? <laughs> yeah, you know it. Of uh, course, we got a couple. Du we got a couple duchies on our uh, on our team. Ian <laughs> and Jimmy, uh, both both members of the Stroop Waffles. So uh, this is this is part of the uh, Fab Fab Team Cup, Foundry Team Cup, Foundry whatever. Team but Cup. FD I just called the FTC. The FTC um, sounds so much better when you call it that. Wow. Yeah, right. Uh so this was this was one of the week one matches. We're gonna be doing uh more of these replays, uh either on a weekly or bi weekly. Mm -hmm. Uh we're gonna be covering different kind of matchups and uh I have asked our team to you know record some of these so we can go through them for you guys, see kind of some of there's some spicy stuff that our people are bringing out for this kind of thing. Yeah, Royal Briar, we got Arachne. We Royal got, Briar. I am so excited to see got, that. Holy we got, we got, we uh, got the rock is cooking probably somewhere <laughs> in here. <laughs> oh, uh, wow, um, you had me at rock. Oh my goodness. Oh, I bet. So we've got some spicy things. So stay tuned for more of these uh, CC game replays. And with that, hope everyone enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. We are having some uh, some giveaways coming for Christmas and New Year's, and to mark our uh, mark the New Year on the channel. We actually just got to 1.35k subs. Pretty mm -hmm. recently, so appreciate everybody At for our uh, one year mark. Here. We started back in November of 2021. We haven't been around that long, so we are we are trying to push out as much as we can. We are fairly busy in our schedules here, so apologies if it's not as uh, holidays frequent. around the corner. Holidays it's it's gonna happen. Yep, yep. And with that, from wherever you are in the world, have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Bye for now.